and everybody in racing, you know, it's it's an awful it's an awful day. It's a, it's a terrible shame that we've lost lost a, a true great in Sir Henry. And he wasn't just an employer for you. He was a he was a friend. He was a confidant. He, he helped you with your riding. Yeah, no, he he was a great a great man. Um, and as great a trainer as he was, and he was a great trainer. Like he was, he was an even even better person. And um, you always felt at ease with him in any sort of a scenario, you know, you were in or whatever, or you could go to him for advice. And you, you know, he'd he'd the wealth of experiences. Obviously, being an older man than myself or whatever, but he he make he, he'd make you feel at ease and whatever the, the problem or the scenario, you know, he'd he'd talk you through it and. He was great. He was great to ride for. He was very straightforward, and he left a lot to me. And he'd often say, you know, just treat it like a bit of work, and just come back and try and win. You know, so in that respect, it sort of helped you as a jockey, and that you were at ease. And that, you know, if you make if you made a decision right or wrong, well, then you made it, and he, you'd have his full backing behind you. And that's it's very very important. But um, but even I'm sure if, if you speak to any of his staff, they'll tell you that you know he he made it all. A bit of fun, you know, and he, he ran a serious business at the end of the day. But he he treated like a bit of fun, and he he was a very important man and a well-respected man. But he didn't take himself too seriously either, you know. He was he was always a bit of fun, and, and I could I could stand here for hours and, and keep praising him, and I still probably wouldn't do him justice. It's it's, it's just a sad day, and you know, obviously my thoughts are with, with those closest to him, his his family, his friends, you know, along with myself, the, the other members of staff. His owners, his horses, everybody, you know, this, all of, of racing will, will feel his loss in one way or another. And How did your association begin with him? It started as a very small thing, you know, just um, riding in a, in a sort of a lesser capacity and, and getting the odd ride for him. And, and that was something that, that kind of grew. And, uh, and there was never any huge moment where it was launched on the scene. And, as a, as he kind of treated me like one of his horses. He, he just, when the time was right, and, and I was very lucky in that respect, that there was a lot of good horses came along, so it, it helped my profile. And w without him, I wouldn't have probably reached the heights I've reached. So I'm, you know, I'm very grateful for everything he's done for me. I, I, I doubt anybody else would have given me the same plug at, at that stage in my career. It's a great simile, actually, you make between that, you know, him giving you plenty yeah. of time. And, and that was actually his trademark with the horses. He knew when to press the button. He, he had a sort of an empathy with them, yeah, and, yeah. and, and he, he'd do a lot of things on, on feel and, and instinct. And he'd say or do something with a horse, and you would think, why is he doing that? And then, you know, a month down the, the road, you say, oh, you know, that, that's making sense now. Or and he just, you know, he just, he, he had great belief in his horse. Like, if he entered a horse in a race, he'd... Nine times out of ten, he'd run it, and he'd run it. You know, he he wouldn't go into what the competition was or the opposition was too much. He'd sort of just he would feel that his horse would have a chance, and and that was good enough for him. And it was certainly good enough for for me or anybody else that rode him. And you know, I, I'm very, although like people sort of refer to me as Frankel's jockey, I, I I'm more proud of the fact that I was Sir Henry's jockey. You know, and and I, I had some pretty big boots to fill. You know, going back the years, whether it's Steve Cawson, Pat Hedry, Leicester, I mean, it was, I wouldn't say a huge pressure because I never felt the pressure. He never let you feel that pressure, but I, I was tremendously privileged, honoured and, and proud of, of the position I held. And, you know, as I said, you know, we're, we're all feeling the loss today. Because he let you mature, didn't he? The funny thing is, you know, if you put a jockey under pressure sometimes, he always seemed to have a joke. And a, Did you ever have a crossword? Uh, you know, but like, he, he'd often maybe pull you up over something okay. and and if he had if he pulled you aside and, and said something to you or whatever you'd he might give you a bit of a telling off or something trivial or whatever but and some people give you a telling off you like, but after he'd have a word with you you'd be nearly thanking him because it was all very constructive <laughs> yeah. everything he did was constructive and he did he did everything with so much class you know and i dare say i ever heard him swear even you know he was he had a classy way of doing everything you know whether with his horses his clothes, his garden, everything about him, he was, he was a man of so much class. I was just going to say, he was that sort of guy, wasn't he, when you watched him with the races, and in a funny sort of way, I used to stare at him because he'd have those suede Gucci shoes, and he was just yeah. something about him, or an aura about yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. I, I went up there, it was last year. It's toward a three-quarters of the way through the season, and went up to look at 
a race or entries or whatever, yeah. something like that. And, and he said, come on, let's, let's go and get dinner. And I was like, what, what's the about? And he said, get that basket. So we, got to, we went down, we were picking peppers and every sort of a, you know, runner beans and God knows what in the garden. And we were <laughs> off down there. And we, we only spoke about horses for two minutes and we were like chatting about God knows what. He, he was a great man. He'd, he'd make anybody feel at ease. He was very approachable. I, I've seen so many people who, you know, he wouldn't have anything to gain off them or, or they weren't influential people in, in the racing business, I say that, and, and he'd bring them in around the place, show them the horses or, you know, I've seen him make lists for, you know, just ordinary guys who just went up to watch a gallop. He'd say, oh, keep an eye on these horses or whatever. He was, he was a great man. He was a people's man and, and as I said, very approachable and you know. I think what you say about people's man, I think the long longevity of his staff at Warren Place shows you that, doesn't it? Yeah. Some yards have a high turnover. He had lads staying there for years, yeah. didn't he? He did, yeah. They stayed and but he was he was always very like for a man of his social stature, he was always very modest and, and you know, he, as I said, he didn't take himself too seriously and I suppose too many people do that nowadays, but he, he that's why I say he was one in a million and as I said early on to someone like they, they don't make people like him anymore. He was he was a one-off. And, and, and he, he scaled the heights to the very, very top, obviously, ten-time champion trainer. Then things went wrong, and he managed to get back again, which is so lovely. To find, to unearth a Frankel is extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. But he, he was a man, he was, he was made... He was tougher than people thought, because behind all the, the fancy shirts and the rose bushes and all that sort of eccentric side, he was, he was very, very tough deep down. I mean, he wasn't like a kind of a bulgy sort of a man but he in his own way like he battled with that illness for a long long time and, and he was much tougher and, and very competitive as well you know he, he took you know those big races and that very very seriously and, and you know he made you feel at ease but he meant business at the same time he a very tough and, and you know competitive man a master tactician as well I remember thinking what are you gonna do in the guineas when Frank around there what are you gonna do and and you let him blast and obviously yeah. that was under his orders but a very brave maneuver I yeah uh, I mean the way things panned out that day it was, it was we had a few options and we did and uh, thankfully with the horse to help us but I mean the way he handled that horse from start right to the end uh, I mean you know he, he really excelled with him he, he had tremendous patience with him and, and I can tell you, he, like, he wasn't a, a straightforward ride to begin with. He, he, he was a lot hotter than people thought, and, and he, he, like, he worked wonders with him. He, he'd have scaled quite, he'd have scaled heights, but how high I, I don't know. But anybody else, I mean, he was, he was the man for the horse, and it was a weird way. You know, it all sort of happened, you know, it was magical, and I look back on that. You know, I, 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 I can honestly say, I think 90% of trainers would have gone mile and a half with him. You know, and yeah. just the put themselves under the pressure or the press would have put them under pressure and they'd have gone yeah, further. That's right, know? no, but he, you know, he was, he was training his horse and he wasn't going to let anyone else train him for him, so he, he, he stuck to his guns and, you know, he, he had a very definite view on things and, and his approach to that horse was, you know, the way he handled him and, you know, so it was, it, it was great. It was, there were magical moments, you know, in, in everybody's life, you know, anybody, you know, I, I was, you know, very touch to be that close to the whole thing going on so and what will you remember him most for Tom will it be you know obviously the big winners obviously the Frankos but will it be his sense of humor that sort of come on Tom go down yeah. the garden and pick some yeah. vegetables and yeah or you know it's to be that that cheeky <laughs> slap he'd give you on the head when you'd be finished riding work or he'd tap you on the shoulder you know it was you know he had a sense of humor but I, I remember him as a, as a, a great man first and foremost uh, he was a good friend to me he was a great trainer he had great horses he was he was a true great